Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, team. Thank you for joining. We are delighted to be here, and thanks to the Hyperledger Global Forum for making this happen. Today, Team IBM will be talking about building transformative platforms for scaling 5G ecosystems using the technology of Hyperledger. And I will be joined with my colleagues, Matthews Thomas and Amandeep Singh. Matthews is a distinguished engineer in IBM and is responsible for leading and building a lot of our Hyperledger solutions in partnership with me. And Amandeep is a senior Hyperledger technical specialist infusing AI and cognitive bringing 5G ecosystems to life. Moving on to the next slide. Let me first start by talking about the addressable market for 5G. The demand and the potential is huge. I will not go into the numbers, but it's suffice to say that if you look at any analyst report, if you look at any indicators in the mar market, and if you look at any disruptive industry data points, the market for 5G in terms of data, quantifiable data, as well as growth, and the potential to transform and disrupt industries is humongous. Moving on to the next slide. There is always a question as we start on what's 5G, what's edge, what are the differences between them and do we need 5G for edge to happen? And I consciously put this slide in the beginning so that it's easily understandable to everybody. 5G is obviously the transformation from 4G to 5G networks. It's about creation of networks to allow data and information to be processed at a much faster scale and speed. So 5G is the natural evolution from 3G, 4G, but at much rapid pace than the 4G and that's 5G. What edge is, it brings compute functionality to the edge in the network. 5G edge is basically at a much higher speed and at a much reduced latency. The other feature that 5G brings is network slicing, which enables you to do new and different functionalities which were not possible. But just sticking to the edge, it basically is low latency, giving you the speed to do computing much faster, much quickly at the edge of the network. With that, I will hand over to Matthews and go to the next slide. Thanks, Paul. So what I will be doing is just giving you an overview of the 5G landscape, and then I'll take you through some specific use cases. Now, it's very difficult in a 30-minute session to give you an overview of the 5G landscape and, and the, uh, some of the key use cases. So everything that will be presented here is going to be extremely high level. But if you start off with the left-hand side, what you have are different sensors, Moving off to the right, there are different devices, cameras, and these would all then be connected to the 5G network. The 5G network could be connected to what we call an edge cluster. Within, a, within telco terms, it would, be called, it would be known as a MEC, a multi-edge compute node. 
that could say run in a stadium that could run close to the premise where the specific operation needs to happen so that we get quick responses. Then we have the core 5G network that you see with, with that cloud and that also has some edge components and that will in turn be connected to public and private clouds. The reason for bringing this up is to illustrate to everyone that there's a huge opportunity for blockchain here because you have multiple parties, each bringing their specific services to this ecosystem. And each of them, or especially the one, some of the key individuals here, need to know what exactly is happening, where, when, and why, in order to ensure that the system operates properly, billing, and everything else uh, is, is successfully executed. Next page, please. Let's go ahead and talk about some of the use cases. There are multiple use cases here that you see. We are in the process of working and implementing several of these with multiple uh, uh, CSP partners and customers, because a lot of these use cases are focused on other industries. But what we would, I will do is just give a very high level overview of just, just a few and then take a bit of a deeper dive into some of the remaining ones. So the basic idea behind spectrum management is the ability to manage your spectrum and the ability to lease it out. And once others have the ability to temporarily use the, the spectrum, what, what, what happens is um, you use the key functions of blockchain, such as uh, decentralization, um, transparency, immutability, take your pick. All these are very important from a spectrum management perspective, because once you've been allocated that spectrum, everybody gets to know about it. It cannot be changed until the next transaction occurs and so on and so forth. I, I'll get into a bit of a deeper dive into infrastructure network and security, but there are also specific ones around smarter healthcare and cities, smarter cities. I'll just pick one, a couple of these. Smarter cities is uh, one that we're working in quite a bit, and that's primarily on routing traffic, making sure the traffic is being routed to the appropriate locations, and uh, we're able to respond quickly and provide the appropriate services to ensure that the city runs smoothly, and this becomes even more important when first responders have to respond to a specific issue. Worker safety is where you'd like to ensure that a worker is safe, and if they ever say enter into a danger zone or do an activity that is dangerous within a fraction of a second, you'd like to know that. But blockchain needs to capture all these transactions because these are legal and other issues. And that's where blockchain comes in. Let's move to the next one, Aman. So let's take a couple of these uh, just from, from, from a very high level perspective. Uh, slice is a very important concept in 5G and blockchain plays an important role when it comes to Slice. So hopefully all of you can see the blockchain icon that's right out there in the hybrid cloud. So from our implementation perspective is when you create a Slice, it will impact several of the core network components within the 5G network. And so you'll see things such as VDU, VCU, core, et cetera. This, you know, for, for, for those who are network specific, they'll, they'll recognize all of these. But for those of you who don't, just consider these as some key components within the 5G network. So when a slice is created using an orchestration engine, it has to be go through these multiple vendors, create the slice at multiple locations, and then on the Mac, will, there will also be a, 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 a network component running as well as the actual application running. So in the example of that worker safety uh, use case that I gave, that application would actually be running on the MEC and would be deployed there. But as you can see, there are multiple thing parties here. As we deploy it, you know, everybody would like to understand why, what, what was deployed. Everybody would like to understand if there was a failure, where it happened, why did it happen? And then as we're running, am I meeting certain SLAs? Uh, and if I'm not meeting them, you know, uh, how close was I, was I to meeting them? If there are issues running, uh, running on my Mac, and this Mac could be distributed in multiple locations. And this is where, in, in, and Aman will show you in the solution where we keep track of all these different transactions and ensure that the appropriate relevant ones are there so that uh, the billing and everything else happens correctly. The next one that we're going to look at, Aman, if you could just go to the next slide, that's just one example of one use case within um, 5G, it would be security. Security is a big one here. So there are multiple aspects from a security perspective. 
So, you know, there could be, um, let's say there's a security violation on, on, your, on one of your, your components, okay? You would like to know immediately about it. Uh, and multiple parties could ex again be involved in this. You need to detect, investigate, and respond. And blockchain would be the transactional record that keeps a track of all these. So all the different parties who are involved in this can find out exactly what happened, where, and why, and what was the remediation, and uh, what could be done to rectify it in, in the future. Let's go to the next one. The last one that I'm going to cover briefly is, uh, so, so, so far we've just taken some network-specific use cases looked at the 5G network and illustrated how blockchain plays a role. But the other thing to keep in mind is the 5G infrastructure is, 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 a, is a complex infrastructure. Uh, it requires a large amount of capital investments. Uh, and for example, 5G requires approximately five times the number of base stations that 4G required. So what needs to happen is this, when, when, when we go out and uh, when the CSP start going out and doing this work, there are multiple parties. There's the investments, you know, the whole resource tendering aspect of this, finding out who's involved, who would like to broker. There's the matching between the resources and then lease agreements have to be created, which go through an evaluation process. There has to be a final settlement process where everybody agrees on this is what we should do. Then there's an execution in terms of the actual deployment of the 5G network, whether it be laying out the radio heads or everything else, uh, putting out the mech and, or everything else that happens in between. So as you can see, multiple parties involved here, multiple products, multiple uh, uh, difference of services and agreements that need to happen. And blockchain, uh, this is one of the areas also that we're working on where blockchain plays an important role. Now, what I'll do is pass it off to Aman, We will actually look at one of the use cases and get into some more details. All yours, Aman. Thanks, uh, Matthews. So um, in, in today's session, uh, we're gonna cover an example of uh, how we are using Hyperledger to track the supply chain of our network services as it is being deployed on the network cloud and network edge, and also on the applications that we're deploying to the edge and how we are bringing it all together giving a one single view to different parties involved in this process and how we are managing the transactions related to each and every asset it could be in virtual or physical network functions and also virtual and physical uh, application and iot devices that are deployed on the edge on a single uh, hyperledger platform distributed across different clouds so this is uh, an example of an architecture uh, that we used uh, in, the de in the demonstration that you're gonna see after this. So you can see how we have divided this uh, amongst three different uh, clouds. One is the CSP cloud, where we are hosting the BSS and the OSS platform, which uh, includes our service uh, design orchestration and operations for network cloud. Also our edge application management, which is responsible for deploying application and IoT devices. In the same layer, we have also embedded our Hyperledger fabric and the smart contract uh, that is running on the Hyperledger fabric, which holds uh, the details of all the agreements and the rules and policies that the uh, supply chain should um, uh, follow. Then we are also uh, hosting a blockchain peer node uh, on, on this cloud, which, and in our case, it's all running on a Kubernetes environment, which we are using OpenShift for. Then uh, similar blockchain periods and Hyperledger layer can also be deployed on the vendor side, which can also be hosted on the CSP environment. And thus, uh, there's a blockchain network created between these peers and the peers that are running on the network cloud as well. So on the network cloud, you can see that we have a, a networking layer on OpenShift, which is running some of the core network functions like 5G core, our uh, IMS, and VCU from the VRAN. And then we also have our edge analytics and blockchain uh, uh, peer node running on the network cloud. Then uh, finally on the network edge is where we are deploying the edge uh, network functions uh, like uh, VDU and they could be also a user plane function for the 5G that can be deployed close to the edge which sits close to the IoT and the application layer which we are deploying using our edge management. Then we can have a local database that metrics and 
local yeah. events and that can be optionally passed uh, via integration uh, using REST APIs with the blockchain peer running on the network cloud and CSP cloud. Or if we want to further reduce down the latency, we can also deploy a blockchain peer close to the edge as an optional um, example. So uh, before I go to an uh, example of a uh, video of, of this live demonstration, I now want to give another uh, perspective or another view of this uh, use case. Uh, this, this was a more detailed architecture example. I quickly uh, go here. Just want to highlight that what will what uh, a flow of this use case will look like. So in this case, now let's say we have all the uh, network functions uh, and applications onboarded ready to be deployed. So we can uh, now have our integration done with the BSS o OSS layer, which is hosting uh, order management or a service catalog management uh, uh, software or a, or, a, or a platform, which can take requests for new services to be deployed. Now, the service can be as, uh, as complex as uh, uh, this one that we'll see that will have many different network components to be deployed and different applications to be deployed in different network clouds. Now, how to manage the lifecycle of each and every component that will be deployed as part of the service. So as our orchestrator is deploying, let's say in this example, it will be deploying a 5G core with a network slice on it. It will be deploying IMS. It will be deploying our SDN controller to manage the transport layer. It will be deploying the VCU and VDU for VRAN. And then it uh, it will also trigger our edge application manager to deploy I, to deploy to uh, smart IoT devices or applications at the edge. Uh, how we are managing all the transaction related to licenses, inventory of these different components is where Hyperledger is playing a very key role. And also, uh, not just to pro, uh, manage the lifecycle of this uh, uh, assets, but also to share insight into this lifecycle across different parties involved in this supply chain. That could be vendors. Uh, for these different uh, network functions and application devices. It can also be any other service agents that are involved uh, during the installation and provision process. So with that, I'll, I'll move to uh, the demo video to show an example of uh, uh, this uh, use case. So uh, this is uh, our friend Sharath. He's actually acting as a, let's say, a worker who's in a, in a network edge environment or or you can say uh, uh, industry example and we need to now deploy a, a particular application and a network layer onto that edge to make sure that uh, we are uh, uh, applying policies to monitor this worker uh, that he's wearing a, a proper uh, hard hat or he's wearing mask at the center for its uh, safety so in this case now we go to a particular portal which can uh, which which has the list of services that we can select from and we can enable on this particular network edge so here we are going into the 5g service uh, category and then we are per selecting a particular network slice example uh, which is being suggested here this service basically will then uh, trigger our order management tool that order management tool is going to break in the service into subsequent smaller service orders and then those service orders will be fulfilled uh, by the CSP working with, let's say, different parties in this example. Let me, sorry, let me step back a minute uh, on this page. So the service provider can be working with the equipment provider, a field agent, uh, network function providers to provide those the different assets to fulfill this service order um, for this network service. So in this case, there could be different licenses involved. There could also be uh, uh, any other uh, inventory check to be followed. So if you can see here, and I'll go back to this towards the end, that all these blocks are basically just transactions being recorded in the process of this supply chain of fulfilling this order. We jumped ahead a little bit to the last step for today's session since we don't have enough time. So uh, uh, basically, once all the licenses are fulfilled, uh, it will then send a request to our network orchestration tool to provision that network slice. And in this, in this example, uh, and we're just going to go to the service design of that network slice, uh, will include the following 
different components. So in, in this case, we'll have a 5G core, which is a containerized function that will be deployed on one network cloud. And then we'll also have the edge, edge management layer, which will deploy the uh, actual worker safety application on the uh, industry edge. So this that was just an example to show how complex these services can be in the 5G and edge environment and how we can use Hyperledger to track the uh, details of all these different components. So I'll jump a little forward. So here we can see as uh, the orchestrator is uh, deploying all these different components and we can see that they are being, uh, the pods or the containers are being deployed onto different cloud and edge environments. Uh, all in the back end will be tracked as different individual transactions uh with the api integration to all these uh, orchestration platform onto the hyperledger here and will be visible to different parties as required on their own dashboards so moving forward a bit so here uh, uh, in addition to the network uh, service orchestration we also have our assurance platform where uh, we may be monitoring different uh, network events as the services are being de uh, deployed, any alarms, any other security threats to be monitored, and any other uh, topology events to be monitored. In this case, we can see that uh, now the service is up and running. We can also see uh, uh, any status of a particular uh, uh, network component at a particular time. And this is just uh, from the perspective of the orchestration and operation platform. But uh, later on, we'll see that how this can be also uh, shared from the transactional information from Hyperledger onto the dashboard of CSP, the enterprise customer, and the uh, uh, vendors who are responsible for uh, maintaining this uh, service and operation. So just to continue, uh, uh, what happened uh, next in this service orchestration is that the edge management also went ahead deployed the uh, policy for object detection on that uh, worker safety environment. And in this case, as that is getting deployed using our edge application management, we will be able to now see that it's able to that person on the edge. Now let's say we want to update this policy to make it uh, 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 more enabled to detect a particular hard hat or a particular uh, mask in this scenario. In this case, we are saying that it's not ready yet. So we are basically going to go back to our orchestration platform, do an upgrade on the service to add a new uh, object detection model for the worker safety. In this case, we are changing this to uh, a hard hat model now. And as we go ahead and deploy this, then we'll be able to see that now the edge application is upgraded to detect uh, that particular uh, um, worker with heart ad or a mask on for its own safety. So in this case, I'm just going to move further. Yeah. So now th that the application edge is updated, uh, now we can see that uh, the model is able to detect a hard ad and also be able to detect any mask or any other requirements for worker safety. So this was just an example of how we are orchestrating end-to-end uh, -end service on our 5G uh, and our edge cloud. and now going back to the uh, transactional uh, view, so I'm just going to go to go here on this page. So this is actually a, a, a this is not a, a product uh, dashboard. This is actually a demo dashboard that we created for this use case. So here you can you can see as the CSP was working on deploying that particular uh, uh, application on uh, our network and the application edge. It was working with uh, different parties in this uh, supply chain, equipment provider, field agents to go in and configure those uh, devices at the edge, and maybe with uh, VNF providers to provide the network functions and any other uh, uh, elements to, uh, required to be configured. So in this case, as uh, basically uh, this was being processed, all the transactions were getting recorded on our blockchain platform. So let's say uh, in this case, if I, quickly run through a few steps. Um, let's say there's an equipment provider who needs to provide that equipment and is accepting the order. So we are also managing any SLAs that are involved uh, in the, uh, in, in the uh, supply chain of this uh, service uh, asset. So in this case, let's say that the physical equipment was delivered, but it was delivered with a delay. So, so uh, 
we can automatically apply these SLA uh, agreements between the uh, the uh, operation between a CSP and equipment provider. Uh, said so that in this case, let's say if there was a delay, the SLA can say that the completion SLA was not met. So it may reflect into any billing or policy uh, between the CSP and this equipment provider. In this in this example, when the SLA was met, the billing was two thousand, and if it's not met, it's came down to 1500 just as a very small example uh, of how uh, these SLAs can be managed further down let's say that uh, in in our example of uh, that video we saw that uh, once the services are getting deployed uh, those IoT devices are getting activated and those models are getting deployed we are also managing the configuration of those devices so what we are doing is we are actually calculating a device hash uh, that maps to the existing configuration of those devices as the edge, and we are uh, storing that, mapping it to uh, every asset identity on our blockchain platform or hyperledger platform. So in case, let's say, someone goes in and tampers with this device at the edge, um, and I'm just going to go past a few uh, steps, uh, we can also show that uh, if someone uh, like currently the status is auth authorized, if someone goes in and, and messes up with the devices at the edge or someone uh, is uh, trying to add a security threat to the functions running on the cloud, it can be tracked onto the Hyperledger platform as a threat and this status can change to unauthorized and will be easily visible to the equipment providers and other parties uh, responsible for remediating that action. So uh, again, um, um, uh, we're running short on time, but I just wanted to quickly go and show a quick view of the transactional uh, uh, view of as well and how these transactions can be made visible to different participants in this ecosystem. Uh, with that, I'll conclude the live demonstration part and uh, I'll give it back to Utpal to con for the conclusion and also if there are any questions. Thank you very much, Aman. So team, we typically get a lot of questions on how to start the journey on 5G and Edge, how to make sure that it's smooth, how to mitigate potential challenges when you get into that journey. And so what we have done here is classified it into four buckets, if you will. The most important thing as you get onto the transformative journey is talent. Talent, having the right people, the right skills, and also having a transformative mindset. So that's the first bucket that you see over there. And it requires organizations to have the right skills, the right set of talents, because the skills for 5G and Edge are different than your traditional IT skills. The second is applying the right technologies to enable the 5G on the edge. And what I mean by that is technologies like AI, blockchain, IoT, all of those are getting prevalent. And in fact, in many cases, and in a lot of the cases, all of those combined with the native cloud, the hybrid cloud becomes critical core components from a technology standpoint for success. The third are, is the new ways of working. The traditional days of the waterfall models are changing. It's about try fast and fail fast. It's about cooperating and co-opting with potential competitors and working collaboratively with them in an ecosystem. And then the last but not the most important is obviously this can be done anywhere in the world as long as it's 5G enabled. So the location becomes a non-issue. All of these can be handled globally depending on the CSP that we're working with or the geography that we are working with as long as it has the 5G enablement, and obviously the technology, the skills can all be provided remotely and virtually. With that team, I close the session. Hopefully it was helpful, productive. 
If there are any questions, please put it on the right side on the chat, as well as please feel free to reach out to the moderator after the session is over, if you have any questions, and we'll be more than happy to respond to that later on. Thank you and bye for now.